All right, folks. Good evening. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of Beyond Baroque Literary Arts Center, I'd like to welcome you all to the Wanda Coleman Theater and to Eclipse Illumined Poems and Images and Dialogue featuring Kathy Sandstrom and Tom Cooney Crawford. Give it up for them. My name is Jimmy Vega. I'm the Associate Director of Beyond Baroque. I'd like to start by acknowledging Beyond Baroque's presence. Thank you, thank you. Uh, on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Tongue of peoples, we acknowledge the wrong done to these peoples through settler colonialism, genocidal practices, and the violent disposition of their land. As an arts organization, we are committed to uplifting indigenous communities, their stories, and cultures. For those who don't know, Beyond Baroque is Los Angeles' oldest literary arts center located here in Venice, California. Founded in 1968, first as an experimental literary magazine before reimagining itself and becoming the literary home we know it as today. We are based out of the original Venice City Hall and help support and help cultivate new writing through our extensive program of writing workshops, readings, and performances. We offer a number of workshops online via Zoom, such as our free weekly Monday night fiction workshop facilitated by Raquel Baker and our historic Wednesday night poetry workshop currently facilitated by L.A. Johnson. Similarly, we offer several paid in-person and online intensive workshops throughout the year. Tomorrow, we're offering The Ode, A Joyful or Analytical Ringer with Lori Badikian. And later this month, uh, we're excited to host the fourth annual 30 and 30 uh, workshop with poet Brendan Constantine, which will occur online starting on the last Saturday of March, and it'll take us all the way through uh, April uh, to help us celebrate Poetry Month, National Poetry Month. Aside from our workshops, we offer several readings throughout the year. Uh, next week, we'll have a full slate of programs featuring uh, folks like Sam Sachs, Safia Helio, uh, Josh Charles. On Friday, we're going to feature Sarah McClay, so please do come back for all of that and more. Yes. Um, and we also, we also offer several memberships to Beyond Baroque, starting at $60 for an individual membership. Purchasing a membership allows us to offer free online programming, programming in person as today. Um, so do please uh, become a member if, you ha if you're not already. Um, I want to give a big thanks to our staff, Quentin Ring, Eric Alberg, Yvonne Salinas, Genesis Perez. Yes, please give it up for them. Uh, they make all of this happen. And thank you all for being here with us tonight. Um, before we get started, and I welcome Kathy and Tom to the stage, I'm just going to read their bios and then they'll um, come up to the stage. Kathy Sandstrom is a Los Angeles based poet and writer. Her poems are online at the Academy of, Amer of American Poets and have been published in the Southern Review, Plowshares, Lyric, Exphrasis, and other leading literary journals. Anthologies include Coiled Serpent and Wide Awake, among others. A short story for children appeared in Zizzle of two, nomina two, of two nominations for a Pushcart Prize. One was from the Southern Review. Her poem, You Again, is in the Artist's Book Collection at the Getty Museum, Los Angeles, and at the University of Southern California. Two of her poetry manuscripts have been finalists in several prestigious book competitions. Her essay, Braiding the Dreamscape, was published online by the C.G. Young Society of St. Louis, and her essay, Getting Broken, appears in Masterclass, The Poetry Mystique by Suzanne Lummis. Her writing on veterans' issues was published online by the Huffington Post for six years. Presently, she writes for the National Veterans Foundation and is working on her second novel, Along with New Poetry. A military brat, she has never been from around here and still expects to hear from the Pentagon any day. <laughs> Tom Cooney Crawford, painter, sculptor, poet, earned his MFA in painting at Syracuse University and did graduate work in sculpture at the Rhode Island School of Design. He began his 40-year career in New York with his two back-to-back -back shows at T. Bournage Gallery. He's had 34 solo shows, 16 of them in New York City, and his work has been exhibited nationally and internationally. 
a recipient of an NEA grant, New York CAP grant, Open Studio Award, and Kilriley Residency Award. He has taught at Middlebury College, Parsons School of Design, Bennington University, and Lafayette College. In the early 2000s, he left the art world, college teaching, and the U.S. to clear the bramble from his head. He lived first in Bavaria, then for four years on Ireland's wild west coast in the Ring of Beirut. On his return in 2010, he went into his studio and worked in isolation for a decade until his most recent one-person exhibit, The Inner Eye of Art, The Outer Spark. His poem, Flutter, was published in Chronogram 2019, and he is the author of Raising of the Heart, a visual novel. He relocated his home and studio to the Los Angeles area in 2020. Please welcome Kathy Sandstrom and Tom Cooney Crawford. Thank you. Thank you all. I need to move over just a bit. Thank you all for being here tonight. You can tell probably we, we're shining. We are on the inside, certainly. Um, this is a wonderful occasion for me, especially because Beyond Baroque was my first community. Growing up the way that I did, we moved every two years, and the poets made a place for me. Um, before we start, I think Tom would like to tell you a little bit about the book. About Eclipsed Illumined. These 17 paintings came into existence in 2010. Can you hear me, by the way? Oh, good. On my return from living on the southwest coast of Ireland and the Ring of Bearer, the series rose from a lifeline heralding oval spheres with their eclipse faces, where fractional moments conjoin mythic archetypal reverence. The inward eye, life from the phenomenal, phenomenal and the numinous beauty's wonder, this hidden mystery out from the cosmic womb, from a universal selfhood, is alchemy in its quest for a dynamic harmony. Together, we sequence the images, then collected our poems in response to the paintings. Last, we sequence the poems to create this journey inward and outward. And now it's Kathy's turn. <laughs> I needed to warm up, so thank you. <laughs> we wanted to make this a braided reading so that you would have an unbroken experience. So if you feel like applauding, thank you. And if you will, hold it until the very end, and then as David St. John says, just go crazy. That, that's the way to do that. Come with us as we take you into Eclipse Illumined. A trick of light. Spear, scoop, reamer, wire. On a table in the sculptor's studio. Knurled handles flecked and sticky with wax. Low rays of sun gild the river, the meditating Orpheus on the wall. Forehead cheek and closed eye, gold. His other eye, scarified, cloaked in blue injury, darkening to dream. Indent of his third eye, shadowed. Seen from the kitchen's louvered window, the elm's bare branches are limbed gold. First light flowing down until the sun is high enough to catch the tulip poplar. Suddenly, day. The room's dust motes swirl in Brownian motion until they drop from view, blinking on and off like quarks. As Orpheus returns to bronze, 
color of earth. Drawn inward and down into ourselves, how we are each called to witness, awakened, and if we are lucky, redeemed. I forge, affording with the same cut out stammering, be strewn in the hygiene of words that lacked in forwarding to a magical verb. I have come now to feel poetry by its induced innocence, being more real in the astonished appeal than the collected dust scattered around my traveling feet. I am drawn to words quickening to point beyond as I go toward the muses that silently mystify to inform, as I forge to transform melancholy into a growing tree not slurring optatively, I leap closer to become a burst of glow. I cannot be wrong, having heard this ripening rise above modality's tease and above those wranglings I tussled with to reify. I am drawn to the frameless field of lilies music that has ears, barley breath of landscape bodies, and what, can, and what grooves in me is to be aware with an earth feel that keeps the planet's expression close to an emotional horizon. Hidden in the song words, I keep inverting to consider its belong, sung at twilight, at the borders of the changing night, into first light, where the muses are found gathered at the gate, waiting to decide what are to be the most profound verses to be through, to let through while they discuss astrophysics and the intuition for advancing, I slid past them luminously with a love song before they renew. This poem opens with an epigraph in 2015, the Oxford Junior Dictionary cut 40 common words, all to do with the natural world, replacing them with terms of the virtual world. Arc, willow, minnow, mussel, lark, dropped. Acorn, adder, otter, fern, not used enough to merit an entry. Singled out for loss, raven. I have to build, the sculptor says, what I need to protect these wax creatures I keep bringing into the world. His Orpheus series, each one expressing the metaphor slightly slant why we need starling, wren. I lie awake, worry about linnet, fen, hallow. <clears throat> grew from roots. I grew from roots into an arc of comprehension, riped from the tree 
to know. I grew into a disembodied transmutationist mediator. The last phantom through the night scurried away. Within a taut silence, I took on an eye of an arrow made from the first enlightenment, taking flight on a non-thinkist act to crystallize an accuracy, aim to cross over both an end and a begin. Railing wild, I became surprised. Something in me was off kilter. Conjecturing, pitting into a spurious separation, I turned to see behind me, sto stoked to a new intensity, Orpheus is playing the lyre. And I listened, as if it were the planet's wing of song. Magically, it released the intrinsic in me. Sire perdu, the French for lost wax. For structure and stability, he builds an armature, then warms the wax he presses onto it, modeling the fine features of his Orpheus, poet and prophet, transformed on his return from the underworld's darkness. Whole days, weeks, spent shaping and reshaping the delicate face, sensuous lower lip, the aquiline nose, one eyes closed in serenity or peace, the other scarified. Deep gouges disfigure the cheek. For the sake of truth, the artist, capable of perfection, turns on his own creation. Are we not also marked? What can we understand of our own disfigurements? shaping us. What if, rather than masking scars, we bold burnished our wounds, became more visible, more whole? Pulse of the seed. Puffed clouds reappear disappear as you rake the sky in your eye. Blue winds like invisible bodies are on cyclical spins. And the imagination surpasses the strategy there within. Some take watch to those archaic stones wearing thin to blend, to bend the thought of time backwards to etch a new forward, where the will of expression serves as a lead way, the mighty likeness hewn in any in airy pollination prompts us to feel inside the dawn dipped reverence, intake, experience, life wills, hearkening the same to what deems significance. And the black hole admits light by our self-luminous sight, life wills expression. The lambent twilight that soothes the melancholic dreamer, life, life's rise is to reach for what we seek but first undo to recognize. Daunting it is for the least way juggler. Daunting it is for the diminishing word on the stone cutter. To what can exonerate? Keepers of wisdom reappear, having had many names to be called by. Keepers of seers, of star, clusters 
reappear, having had many faces to be looked at. Seers who seize the task awe, expire, inspire, reappear to sing love's instillment, bear it out, see behind the scarred and the beautiful earth salutations. Life's rise from the bittersweet regrows on a maximum demand for liberation, regrowing on a manifold of finite procedures, seers sees life from awareness. And the oak bardic song clearly is still of long in the radiant cosmic tree. The ancient survivability in us retrieves what lasts. Listen to the music in the pulse of the sea. Liberation is not on one sleeve. It's the heart of thee who sees. When I first saw the images from the James Webb telescope, my life changed. Translating light. Held up a million miles away from us, a six meter mirror's gold honeycomb face catches low radiant light. Images from billions of years backwards in time. Invisible infrared translated into visible color, my mind's eye translates again. An oak or mountain range was spangled with stars. Ova at the threshold of a stellar nursery. A red valentine, a blue birthing. Things I can't grasp. Distance, a million miles. Time. 13.5 billion years ago. Lagrange points, Earth and telescope held in lockstep as they each orbit the sun. I stand at the sink, tap running, holding in both hands a cantaloupe as mysterious as the Earth. My fingertips questioning its braille rind, all the ways I am blind. The painting. The painting is on the wall. You may stand in front of it, look right at it, turn your thoughts around it, sit inside feeling it, breathe in its atmospheric aroma, see into its fusion of starry worlds, follow the sapphire lines down in sensual swelling curves, hear the visceral music inside its deep color of purring blue, and then slide back into a calmly ease absorbed by your light, being that you lit the painting alive from the dead matter. The alchemy of what occurs is inherently of you, beyond the frame of thinking. It is the transcendent view. because I wanted to know what the painting sounded like on the inside. Standing before it, I open the painting, step inside to hear the rushing of wind, hollowed out wind, because this universe is not static. From the threshold, I look out on arcs of light drawn into spheres spinning crossing my field of vision in trajectories both straight and curved. Pinpoints of light 
illuminate a darkness that accords everything in it the space it needs. The artist, his back to me, dips his brush, in slow motion draws his hand across his body, then raises his arm, extending it as if reaching out for Adam, any Adam, flinging light from himself, his hand, his brush, out over the universe he's creating, the light traveling in a low arc, front fringed like a crested wave. I dare not step off, uncertain I could get back. I ask, is there gravity in the painting? Without turning, the artist speaks, yes, but no falling only attracting forces and arrival. Those who pass through have only come home. Flutter off the rushing tides. Your mind is such a flutter, fluttering. Come back, come back to the pure water and go upstream. In the sculptor's studio, once in its presence, no going back. The armature within hums like marrow in my bones. Implicit invitation, unbidden, it enters me. My palms ride the arc's current flowing back to the sea. Grasp the curve and it takes hold. Useless to name it. Only retreat to a time before language most ancient form of enchantments, oneness. Tilting head, tilting head, I wear you solemnly as I learn to position perception on the end of a light beam from a long dream I have stepped into the telescope of the mind to watch the faces as orbs in their design with a pliability to wax and then wane, never the same, as the lunar stratagem patently confers while lovers continue to, do, to be bearers of the steady gaze for even the given intensity of seeing fulfills. Expression of the heart eye, seers know that dawn every morning is telling you that you are the light of its pre-existing songs. Your solar eye shine is never not on. Lovers never erase what lasts, emanating one, excavating the symmetry that diffuses the aghast. A viewing platform. Orbiting at 60,000 miles per hour, our earth spins skeins of our past so thin, light passes right through. Like the spun glass angel hair we spread on the tree at Christmas, layers of this diaphanous veil diffuse and suffuse, an enveloping gauzy swath of past over which unimaginable futures will settle. Riding the planet like a child on a carousel, I stand in a whirl of color, my gaze penetrating at times two layers at once, 
stopping on a single face, our eyes locked in a moment of knowing, instantaneous, eternal, fleeting. Unitive Astonishment. Poetry dashes past the spectral tides and the reeling feeling on a deep sigh, strikes a pause on a beautiful form in the likes of what attracts from meal mountain, misty, mysterious waves of incandescence, then poof, the mountain moves dreamily from the frame of your perception. Objects of the beautiful come and go. Different moods, different pleasure, pleasures, different eyes are different infatuated patterns, satisfying different palates. Only what is incapable of vanishing remains and there are those poets who correlate Keats's timeless hymnal. Beauty is truth, truth, beauty. Emblazoned rhapsodic flash, something deepens within the well of being, beauty's intrinsic origin. And the poet and the poems continue to correlate, enchanting us to see this unitive astonishment that we constantly return to, to feel our divine fertility. Some may think this is digging up an archaic language from some period that chimes. Don't let fashion's clever harangue fool the lights of you. The awe that comes from beauty's rise is the most unstained, spontaneous surprise, shaking your innermost to quiver you awe, hour from mind's time. The body so compact, bone, organs shot through with vessel and nerve packed tight against taut skin. Any breach causes a rupture. Unlatch that stuffed valise. No space to slip in anything. But what if the body's more like a Chinese puzzle? Turn the case over, it opens again. Threshold of the mind, a fractal of the inner life of the cosmos. Galaxies slow wheeling their long, dazzling arms around a core of light. Twilight, twilight smile. Further than living on a long shadow, further than an irretrievable look, inspiration concedes to voice an inside faith on a dimensionless light hidden in the arc of art that can make the oracular language palpable, shifting, used, manifesting on the enigmatical face, sheer, instinctual, unshaken, aura-sown feelings gestating off the early vibrations. Like water rings on the harp, effortlessly the music preserves the muse who enchants. Slight curve of knowing pressed upon her lips, lunar look with a lucent halo influence. Who is this Venus? Who is this Mona Lisa? Who is this Madonna? Who is this woman with a pink? 
slow, deep, moving, hush, blush of resplendency, without time's transformation. Peacefully, she is silencing to the eternal duration of her unnamed glance, intimately luminous. And what can mystify the world, holding it in wonder, is in her twilight smile. Equinox. Plain as the panes of a penniless chapel, this room's four panels of diamond-patterned leaded glass streaked yellow-green, as if two colors of molten glass were poured together but unstirred. On this September afternoon, for over an hour, they glow warm and rich as saffron, pour light over a quartet of bronzes, each centered before a panel, primal as gods, the four elements, fire, earth, air, water, dark against the glass until that liquid hour when the sun reenacts the crucible's flow. Come from fire, in shadow they hold cold secrets, but backlit and warmed, they speak of alchemic power, base material refined to bridge the body's core to pure spirit. Twist, turn, reverse. She waved her song around me, whispering into my ear. The earth is in my eye. The cipher of vision has a porous appearance. I lay out the stones around the garden, build up the wood pile by the house. String, string yarns into verses that yarn balls unravel to thread into tales of what was render in charcoal the old black and white portraits. And as I try to dust them, the dust becomes the fading faces. I paste on the collage patterns that hang the ideas to the outside look, reflecting through the spectrum of desire. I was drawn into words that are bygone ways from storylines. And she whispered into my ear as I was waiting for her dawn. Blood red flow boiled inside one body to another. Twist, turn, reverse, reflect, be born, having been the ever I am in more than a quest in the head is more than a walking voice, is more than a brain charged when plugged into the phenomenal floor socket. While inside my eye, the earth images keep flying in orbit. And in some atavistic surprise, some ancient idea wants me to keep running back, printing, running down in the same shore for another life's round. And what lasts after the blast? You cannot live fully by just ringing charm bells. Something peaceful strays, stays in brave those innovations re registered in some of the muted memories, even in my most peace. Excuse me here. Let me back up a minute. You cannot live fully by just ringing charm bells. 
something peaceful stays to brave those innovations registered in some of the muted memories. Even in my mouthpiece, the soul needs to find expression. I lay into her breath of surety. I am converging with her through this beautiful inlaid harmony. The touch of touch that radiates is in the response of generosity, spiraling back to the reawaken, the primacy of the heart's constancy. This thin line of the present, where past and future confront each other, is the threshold of all else. Every learned or felt thing, it all happens here. The inner and outer vying for balance as this line advances relentlessly toward the unknown. While the past, part refugee, part asylum seeker, hauls behind its bundles of memory and circumstance. The task of refining takes place here in this narrow but expandable present. The dark prima materia of our lives transformed into a lantern held high to illuminate one step, then the next. Rhapsody. The mystery may stiffen the voice first. The herd may cast you out to reel on a flat causeway. Deep mythic sigh. Something mysteriously is revealed behind the phenomenal display. She and her rebirthing mood set me the way back to the mythic tree. Empathy, the dark side. What is it about a shattered pain that begs the hand to trace jagged edges? Someone else's loss allows me to approach my own the way I save broken things I will never be able to mend, a wound I thought had closed. A temple bell struck resonates all through the garden. Not that the heart can't hold, but rather that it can. Elder Swift. Like a tree, we grow toward. Suddenly, we are an elder. Cerebellum spread on the diadem of the graying head, wearing its proper look. Leaves of skin, autumn's pulling color wind, sculpted, shapely column curving upright with knotted branches that entwine. The mind, the rooted hand, the palm of the tree, the nascent spirit listens to my call. A dryad matron offers her voice. With the lyrical reinstalled, she took me for a cosmological spin. Elder Swift, Soul steering, what do you see in the dark? Flash on a fallen star toward its spaceless begin. Twinkling formulation, tingering on the sensation. Heliocentric rhythmic inhalation, 
sprouting into an improviser off the confluent where all my where all my growing has been to arouse wonder what i found established never left arts fired up universal recovery is from nature's wanted arrangement i am inspired by her attained beauty. This is a poem with a lot of space, a lot of hesitation, maybe a lot of expectation. Before, each day's rife, a step into the unguessed at. The quotidian present rushes to fill the void, landing on what only seems solid. After loss, the heart's stubborn elasticity bides every sorrow. Ready and expectant, the mind rests lightly above the clanking engine room of the brain. The soul, on some days, wingless. On others, anything. In that particular moment, before my foot touches down. Attend to the upsurge of it is, the seedling from the cognancy on the pneuma, east facing on a generative ancient devotional conversion. What I was born to attend to consolate, springing enough harmonies welcoming beauty's unforgotten splendor, following the four winds, ushers that a melodic response point to what draws life to its genesis. Like the first seed sound where poets roam the interiority seeking to reveal, the primordial relaunch establishing outburst ensuing from love's knowing unflinching beyond whirling the numinous eradicates the fractional for this truth of home is beyond time for the light of being outpours from the divine over over moon arrests my eye The inevitable propels me to follow the luminous sign. Poem for a Lost Son. The Living and the Dead, after John Berger. In the center of a vortex of light, spinning filaments surround me. We touch at times, you and I, an imperfect exchange. That sunset, how I knew with certainty those gilded edges of cloud defined a shoreline, the lake of light where you now live. Three months later, seeing a painting so like it, I knew the artist had depicted not only where you live, but where I'm headed. If I am in the core of time and space, and you are in the surrounding timelessness, then I have lost you in this dimension only. (laughs) 
obeys light. The eclipse deepens lifelines arranged in some form to ignite awe struck by discovering the oldest face of the universe. Are you the wearer of the speed of light? Wondrous condensed archetypes speak this. The constant self consciousness has no gravity, obeys light. Benediction with a line from Rilke. In the silence after the door has slammed, before the guttered flame yields to dark, the nails bitten, the letter written and mailed, the hidden painful past hung out on the line to dry in the rain. After the years of waiting, the knowing comes, so quiet and so simple. This last image is a sculpture. It's a wall sculpture of Tom's. I wanted you to see it. It's, it's made of microcrystalline wax, which oxidizes so that it looks like bronze, and it's meant to be cast in bronze. You are seeing it with the everyday miracle of morning light. We'd like to close with two short poems. But first, we'd like to thank you again for being here. This has been a remarkable experience for us. Thank you for sharing it. I'm going to do this. <laughs> One more wish from the precipice where I stand, that when I step off, I am born up. Waking. Step in. Do drop. Clay feet. Effortless, the open heart. The open Thank heart. You. Thank you. <laughs>